Coming in at number 57, we have our latest and newest Warframe, Jade. And let me tell you, boy, oh boy, she's stacked with what she has available within her kit. In a flying fashion, she sits between a style of Titania and Hildren. See, she's not too fast, but she's not too slow. She's just about right to drop nukes and blitz any enemies challenging you. So, if you enjoy angelic vibes and being in the fence of support, then this is the right frame and video for you. As always, guys, timestamps are added beneath the video. Taking things off of her abilities, starting with her passive. Jade is the first and only Warframe to have innately two aura mod slots, in which, if applied, both slots will increase your drain capacity, making her extremely easy to mod for, requiring less formers. And on top of this, any enemy under the influence of her debuff Judgment will be susceptible and vulnerable to 50% more damage taken for the next 10 seconds. His first ability is Light Judgment. Jade throws out a Well Light in which, if allies enter the radius, they will be healed over time. However, if enemies enter the same radius, they will receive heat damage over time instead. Jade can throw out up to a maximum of five of these Light Judgments, in which, if you throw out a sixth one, it simply replaces the first one. And this ability gives a 100% chance to debuff enemies with the Judgment effect. Jade's second ability is Symphony of Mercy. By tapping this ability, you can freely cycle through three abilities at no energy cost. And whenever you land on the one that you wish to go and select and use, you can hold the ability down to expend your energy and go ahead and buff yourself and your allies as a passive-like aura. Her first cycle is Power of the Seven, which gives ability strength. Her second cycle is Deathbringer, which increases weapon damage output. And her third choice cycle is Spirit of Resilience, which provides shields and overshields, whilst also reducing the shield recharge delay time. This ability is fantastic, and there's definitely room to switch between all three depending on what you need at the time. And this ability will also scale its remaining duration based off any enemies killed under the influence of a debuff judgment. So this is an easy way to go and keep these buffs alive longer for being rewarded and active. This is similar to the Warframe Jaya and her Cathode Grace Cathode current setup. Now his third ability is Athenium Eyes. When cast, any enemies within a 70 degree angle in front of Jade will become exposed, losing their defenses over time, such as their shields or armor, and they also become slowed up to a maximum of 90%. And if this ability is still active and an ally is down, just by looking towards their direction, Jade can revive them from a distance, making her great for those friends of yours that like to push the limits and boundaries of going alone. Jade's fourth ability is Glory on High. Taken to the skies, receiving damage reduction whilst up there, Jade can now move and fly around the tile set freely whilst having equipped her exalted weapon, Glory. By normal attacking, Jade deals heat damage to enemies she targets and has a 10% chance to apply a judgment debuff on the enemy too. But by using Glory's ult fire, any enemy under the influence of a judgment proc will be consumed and converted into an AoE-like explosion around them. This also deals more damage and is empowered when in synergy with her first ability, Light's Judgment. You see, any enemy, while still in the light radius, will have that more damage dealt to them when using the ult fire. Alrighty then, Clark, we get that, we get that. So how should I look to build her? Now guys, I will say she has quite a few different routes to mess about with, but after a little time playing her, I focused on one particular style that reminded me of a similar build I played with the likes of Gauss. A room nuka, but a run and gun theme. This one takes a little more explaining, so let me go and cook for you. Strength is highly complementary to the likes of Jade. Bigger buffs and larger damage output are definitely fantastic if you're in the mindset of playing offensively as a supportive frame. Duration is interesting, as if you're taking all her abilities into account, then having a bit more duration actually helps. But since we're styled as a running gunner, we're actually moving around quite a fair bit. And with this setup, I won't really be needing much more than what I currently have. Now, range is definitely the quality of life here inside this build that I would be wanting. However, it's a little messy. Ideally, my goal is to nuke with her combination of Light's Judgment, which is her first ability, with her fourth ability, Glory's Exalted Alt Fire. This modded with the new blast element infused within it doubles down on the nuke theme. It's like tossing out a grenade into a big pack of enemies and then detonating it at your own time. 
So although range is great, the reach from both the base alt fire and the base blast element are both really low. So this leaves me with giving her a little range to help her, but not overkilling the other mod slots for a setup that doesn't scale typically well with range in comparison to the other base stats available. And then finally we have efficiency and this is one i will always say is your call on how you want to modify it now if you're new to the game you're unfortunately limited to what you can go ahead and do however if you've been playing for a while then you should slowly acquire more selections over time personally i like to go lower my efficiency then i run four things to solve any energy problems prime flow equilibrium arcane energize and a companion that has a synth mod helping to produce health orbs on assists proc an equilibrium which may go and proc the energize which is all stored in the flow lovely jubbly however you go ahead and prefer to do it is your call but this is the method that i enjoy now from there the goal of this build was centered around the wording on her fourth ability mentioning that her alt fire on her glory can consume and detonate any judgment procs on enemies since her first ability gives a 100 percent chance to give enemies judgment i wanted to test it out and surely enough it packed quite a combo when using it for large groups her third ability felt a little lackluster however on paper it sounds really great but it involves too much roaming and the pacing is really slow due to waiting for the enemy's armor or shields to be removed over time well what doesn't need to wait Hildren's pillage ability in which we subsume over jade's third ability basically doing the exact same thing minus the slow and since i was running this solo i didn't really need to revive anyone so i had no real main usage for the athanium eyes so with those in mind, with her second ability providing me extra strength, I can then use that combination with whatever I modify with her and it will be enough to fully armor strip or shield strip enemies with the pillage subsumable. Now I do have a little bit more extra strength in this build if you go math it, but you don't have to go ahead and go overdoing it. I just basically like the extra damage. That's the reason why I have overkilled it. As for the rest of the build, I decided to bring in Ped Umbral mods to help her survival. Since I'm using her first ability a lot, I can swoop into those healing zones, keeping myself alive. You can also possibly sink in the Archon Vitality mod if you are interested, since there's a lot of heat at play here, but it's not really a necessity, so I prefer the Umbral setup myself. Any airborne damage reduction mods such as Aerodynamic or even Aviator also fit into this build extremely well when paired with the damage reduction she also gets passively whilst being in flight on her fourth ability. Now I do have Prime Sure Footage and this is because she's squishy. I would go and say it's not 100% needed, it's just a backup mod for a bit of quality of life. But if you're airborne well enough then you shouldn't have too many issues, especially if you're in a group as well and you're not the main target. You can go and use things like Aviator or Preparation instead inside the slot over Prime Shield Food. As for her Arcanes, as I mentioned earlier, I need the Energize setup due to how I run my efficiency build. However, on screen are some other flexes that I would use to slot in if I'm looking for different variables. Now, they all synergize well with Jade and they all synergize well with what she's going to be doing. So, take your pick and your selection of what you have available. As for Jay's exalted weapon, Glory, the build is kept quite simple. Damage, multi-shot and criticals are more so the obvious to slot in. However, during this update, the blast element has been changed. So to go ahead and put this simply, if you deal 100 damage and it proc blast element on top, 1.5 seconds later, blast will then output 30% of whatever damage you just did outputting. In this case, I did 100, so 30 damage would come off of that 100, 100 damage that you output. This gets better and bigger when you factor in more blast procs or even enemy deaths creating bigger booms in tighter areas. So you can see why it synergizes so well within the setup and you can see why I didn't overdo my range in this setup as well. Archon shards. Now Jade is no stranger to strength. Three times Crimson shards provide me with an extra 30% ability strength. Now, if I do want to go and flex some mods around, this should still allow me to go and keep that pillage ability on a 100% armor shield strip combo on top of that. Again, bigger buffs, bigger damage. So overall, strength fits in well, but it's not a necessity, guys. I'm just going to throw that out there. It just synergizes so well with her.
My next shards were Amber, as it offers a lot of great quality of life. I started in one shard, focusing on the bit of car speed. It's not 100% required, however. Thankfully, although she's active and she can be a bit spammy on her first ability, her second ability doesn't really need to be recast if you're juggled correctly due to the combination and synergy it has with her first. Her third ability in this build is Pillage, and that's mostly controlled off of duration or recasting the ability. And her fourth isn't really affected unless you're constantly swapping in and out of her airborne playstyle, but you shouldn't really be doing that. So, one shard is enough to go and help the light judgment animation speed mainly, and that's the reason why I use it. Otherwise, I personally think things like energy field on spawn is super helpful to begin your missions with. So I slotted in one of those since I didn't use the preparation mod. Azor shards also work well to increase your maximum energy since you'll be draining constantly within this build. Now do go and keep in mind, high kill output is required to help energy or health orbs be dropped to sustain and keep your energy afloat. That is something that I do want you guys to go and pay attention to. If you are taking a backseat role here, then oh my god, you might have to change the build quite a fair bit and really help your efficiency and shards. So keep this in mind. It's good that I go and mention this because I play very, very different and I tend to play solo. Topaz shards can also be used if you're wanting to increase some fancy critical returns for your exalted glory weapon. But as always, guys, shards are subjective to each user, fitting whatever you prefer. Now, basically, none of these are a necessity for her, but do keep in mind that if you are running the pillage, you can at least want that 328% strength setup. Okay, so long as you've got that, you're good. If you're over that, you're even better. If you're under that, you're not good. That's where shards will help you. Ability rotations. So I briefly covered a few things earlier when talking during the build segment of this video, but here's what I would typically cycle. Starting off a mission, get a little energy, however means necessary, and cycle in your second ability to the power of the seven ability strength buff. See, whenever you go ahead and cast this, it means that whilst under this active ability, any future abilities under it will yield more strength bonus returns. From there, take flight using her fourth, glory on high. This provides you with that innate damage reduction to help survival and procs your aura mod if you also have one that's enabled whilst airborne too. This is your survival for now. Now, you can run and gun a little bit, kill some enemies here and there, but what you're mostly looking to do is for the bigger packs of grouped enemies or funneled mobs, throw out your first ability towards them. See, this gives those enemies in the zone the judgment debuff, making them 50% more vulnerable to incoming damage. Then use your pillage ability to armor strip or shield strip those enemies and any other enemies around you. Playing in open tile sets and having enemies approach from many different directions or different halls is actually a good thing for this ability as it's based upon that line of sight reach. And for this playstyle, just don't close yourself in. It's like a high risk, high reward, being hit from different directions, but also setting up nukes for different directions. When they are armor stripped and you've got your first ability zones down, use your fourth ability, Alt Fire, to consume and deal massive damage to those enemies within those zones. This pretty much combines the explosion from the Alt Fire with the bonus damage being in the Light Judgment Zone's first ability and fourth combination, whilst also helping Blast procs modded within your glory synergize and add that overall combination and making for quite a fun run and gun style whilst also feeling like you're throwing out grenades to clear add density. Let's go ahead and call this build Jade's Nades. Do go and keep in mind that your first ability, although consumed with the alt fire, generates a new judgment every second. So this is important because if you don't kill a pack of enemies on your first alt fire consumption, you could just wait a second if they're still in the zone, then you can go and recast alt fire again to go and finish them off. Judgment does not stack. It doesn't add stacks to the enemy. It just refreshes if you've already consumed a stack from the alt fire, okay? Keep that in mind. Jade is a great warframe that has so much going for her and it's inevitable that power creep happens in games but jade definitely has weaknesses if you do run this build keep it in mind that you're airborne so you're still quite vulnerable from many angles and since we're not superior on a shield gate and setup with things like rolling guard because we're airborne you can find yourself dying if not dealing with right enemies at the right times or taking cover at the right times do you know what personally i think that this is fine especially in a meta that has given us overguard jay feels fantastic to play outside of that. So how are you guys finding our newest Warframe, Jade? What are your first impressions of her? And did you enjoy the story of how we acquired her? 
let me know inside the comment section. Thank you guys for watching today's video. A friendly reminder that if you did enjoy, please leave a like or share the video with a friend. If you're new to the channel, come subscribe and join us. But as always, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.